Hi, everyone. I'm Karen David, Program Director for NINDS. And thank you all for joining us and for your interest in our new team science program at NINDS. So speaking of teamwork, every step of developing this program was actually made possible by combining the various expertise and viewpoints from staff. So to illustrate in developing this webinar, we brought in representatives from the different extramural areas. So you'll be hearing from some of them during this presentation. So we are recording this presentation and we'll post the slides as well as the webinar recording on our website. Okay, so for today, we'll be providing some background on the design of this new program as well as help you navigate the funding opportunity um, announcement or the FOA. So you can decide whether this is a good fit for your team science. And to help you navigate the FOA, we've noted in several parts of this presentation, the relevant sections in the FOA. And also some of the slides that we'll be presenting today are text heavy, and this is by design. So you'll have more information to use for reference later. So for this presentation, we'll be covering around 30 minutes of material that's covering items one to five. And then the other 30 minutes will be for answering questions. So feel free to put your questions in the chat anytime during this talk, and we'll be addressing them during the Q&A portion. So some of you have already sent your questions beforehand, and we've collected those and we'll address those as well. If in case we're not able to answer your questions today, you might be able to find them addressed in our FAQs in our website, which we'll update, or feel free to follow up with your NINDS program of, of official or through our NINDS team science email. Okay. So we are stronger together through interdisciplinary team science. As Dr. Korshetz, our Institute Director, noted in his recent director's message. And team science is particularly important to neuroscience, given the complexity of the nervous system, as well as the challenging questions in health and disease. We don't expect one person or lab to have all the expertise, as well as the tools needed to pursue challenging, go go challenging goals. So what team science gives us is the opportunity to pursue really difficult goals in a more comprehensive and rigorous manner. And it also provides us the opportunity to take advantage of what's out there, of our increasing knowledge base, as well as the armamentarium of technological capabilities to neuroscience. So supporting team science, this is not new to NINDS which is why one of the frequently asked questions is, how does this RM1 program different from other NINDS team science funding opportunities? So the blue circle here is meant to symbolize a single project or component. And so for the PO1 project, we depict its multi-component structure where you have some number of projects plus cores and these components would have interrelated and parallel goals. Now, a multi-PI collaboration can also come in through a parent R1. And in contrast to the P01, this will be a project with one set of aims. Now, the RM1 team science structure is more similar to the R1 parent. And this is by design because a single set of aims allows team members to plan for one cohesive unified project through synergistic integrated efforts. Now, there are also some key differences. So for example, the P01 and RM1, these are team specific and team centric funding opportunities. So it would have elements and resources that are team science specific that you won't find in the parent R01. The P01 and RM1 are also reviewed in its own study section. So team science projects are reviewed alongside like projects. And this is in contrast to the parent R01, which is distributed across multiple study sections and the applications range in different sizes and scope. Now, as for the scale of the RM1, I'll talk more about this, but in general, it would be larger than the parent R01 and similar or larger than the PO1. 
So what are the key features of the RM1? It's defined by a single goal that is achieve, achievable within the funding duration. But team science is powerful, and so we expect this goal to be bold, impactful, and challenging, and fully within NINDS mission. So the goal should be, should be difficult to achieve by individual or par parallel efforts, and can only be achieved by the combined efforts of three to six multiple principal investigators, each with a distinct background necessary to accomplish the project. So overall, we are looking for a single cohesive program that require an integrated and interdisciplinary effort. So what do we mean by interdisciplinary? So first, let's think about the overall goal. And the scientific goal should dictate the necessary combination of expertise. And the type of goal that we're looking for here is a goal that challenges existing paradigms, overcomes longstanding roadblocks to progress, and or develops new synergies between different scientific fields. And that could be accomplished by some examples of interdisciplinary opportunities that we've listed here. So for example, bridging various disciplines from basic to translational and or clinical fields, or bridging areas in a novel manner. You could also bridge across scales, for example, from molecular to connectivity to systems and computational in various contexts, such as basic or disease. And you could also consider a cross species approach to find some generalizable principles. Okay, so is this RM1, how is this RM1 program a good fit for your team? So I'm going to touch on three main things to consider so you can gauge fit. So first is the topic. So this is an NINDS led effort. And so the topic must be fully within NINDS mission. So we're looking for bold and challenging goals that can only be achieved by combined team efforts with five year deliverables. And we recommend for you to consult with us to help you gauge responsiveness to these points so that we can also recommend if there are other funding opportunities or programs out there that may be a better fit. If your project is a clinical trial, please note that we only accept those that NIH classifies as BESH or basic experimental studies involving humans or a mechanistic trial. The second thing to consider is approach. So the team approach should combine or integrate the efforts and expertise of three to six PIs. It cannot be a collection of individual or parallel efforts from several PIs. So for a truly integrated projects, the aims are organized to address the overall goal. And that most or all of the aims will require contributions from more than one PI. Now, as for scale, we require equivalent efforts from three to six investigators with principal investigator roles. So these PIs should function as co-equals as reflected in their aims and effort. Now, the scale should also benefit from resources for team management. So for example, you can include a program manager or a specialized staff scientist. And also the scale proposed should also benefit from the expanded page limit for research strategies. So we have 15 page max limit, and this is not your usual 12 page limit, as well as thoughtful considerations of team science aspects, such as team management, defined goals and timeline, as well as consideration of enhancing diverse perspectives. So when is this RM1 not a good fit? And we highly recommend that you consult with us as this part can get tricky, especially because there might be existing programs out there that may be a better fit for your project. So first, because this is an NINDS led program, the topic should be fully within NINDS mission. Could be basic, translational or clinical or some combination of fields, as long as it's within the NINDS mission. If the project is translational, 
we recommend checking out our NINDS translational programs, which could be a better fit. And if the project is clinical trial, we only take clinical trials that are considered mechanistic or BESH. So applications that don't meet our requirements, for example, such as the last three bullet points here, will be considered non-responsive and will be withdrawn. So we highly recommend that you chat with us to talk about this. Okay, now let's get to the practical aspects here of preparing the RM1 application. So this program is a pilot experiment. So we are starting off with one receipt date per year and the page limits are atypical. So we have a 15 page limit for research strategy instead of your usual 12 pages. And we require three other attachments, each with our own page limits. And I highly recommend looking at section four of the FOA where we provide detailed instructions about these application elements. So for example, for the specific aims, they should be organized to address the overall objective to show integration. And this should not be organized by individual or parallel PI contributions. Plus we noted some other things here. For the research strategy, uh, it has an atypical page limit but its structure is similar to that of the parent R1. And we've noted here, as well as in section four of the FOA, what are those extra points that should be addressed? Because these will be specifically reviewed by this study section. So for example, overall, how is this work aligned with the RM1's purpose and requirements? So team science has its own unique set of challenges. And so thoughtful considerations of these three points can help the increase, it can help increase the likelihood that this collaboration will be a success. So this is the rationale for the other attachments that we'll be requiring. So for example, for considerations of team interactions, we require a team management plan. And second, we also require a chart documenting the timeline and benchmarks for success. And third, we also require a plan for enhancing diverse perspectives. And so I'm going to be providing an overview of each of these components and other attachments. Okay, so the team management plan, the main question we've received is, how is this different from the multi-PI leadership plan, which is also required? So the MPI plan focuses on the interactions across the PIs, whereas the team management plan considers everyone in the whole team, including the key personnel as well as the trainees. Now, team science allows for cross-fertilization across disciplines, but bringing people together, especially from different disciplines with their own specialized language could be particularly challenging. So in preparing this team management plan, we recommend two things. One is to consult this document that NCI, NCI put together. So it has practical suggestions such as having a collaborative agreement template that you can find in the appendix. And there are points here that is also related to the recommended subheadings listed below. So I won't go through these subheadings, but I would just point out um, what are things to note here. So for example, this is the the part where you can include justification for personnel to help manage the team. So for example, in the first bullet point here, you can ask for a program manager. And then on the last bullet point here, um, there might be special needs that, needs that may arise. For example, in this last bullet point here, you might need some help with data management. So you can request professional staff if needed, for example, to make to help make multimodal or multi-scale data talk to each other or have the data be accessible across the team. And we have here a point about credit assignment because in team science, there's always the challenge of credit assignment as well as authorship policies. And this is particularly important for trainees and early career stage personnel. So we recommend looking at section four of the FOA where um, these subheadings are explained more in detail. For the second attachment, here we ask that you define the timeline as to what will be accomplished and by whom. 
And this is critical information because reviewers will be using this information in part to assess feasibility and the extent of integration and collaboration. And then the last and third attachment, we recommend visiting our webpage for help in preparing this plan for enhancing diverse perspectives for the PEDP, which we've adopted from the BRAIN Initiative. So on the webpage, we describe what we, what we meant by diverse perspectives and what examples of activities can be included. So this one page attachment should summarize the strategies, provide a timeline and milestones and means to assess progress. And this should be personalized to the project. Okay, so next up is budget. Karen, you're muted, by the way. I apologize. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, okay. So I, I am Karen Molina, um, Grant Management Specialist for GMB uh, at NINES. I've been with NINES for approximately three years, and I've been with NIH for about five years. Um, and I wanted to discuss a couple of the budget items. Um, a couple of, one of the common questions we received about the budget is our budget cap and what can be included in the budget aside from the usual items. Um, and we do not cap the budget per project, but it needs to be justified and reflect the actual needs of the project. Um, we're capping all the spending for all of the awards at the $10 million cost uh, per fiscal year to fund four to six awards. And if you're requesting more than $500,000 direct costs, you need to, um, you need prior approval to send us your um, specifications, uh, team composition, RM1 justification, and the budget. Provide detailed evidence supporting your proposed request in the budget justification section. Um, other allowable costs are costs related to activities in the plan to enhance diverse perspectives. Uh, for example, training and mentoring opportunities also outreach and recruitment activities and inclusion of diverse personnel. Another question that we received was, oh, sorry. Also costs associated with preparing and submitting data to a data archive for the NIH data sharing policy. Costs with associated with hiring personnel for team management, program management, and uh, data science staff and making sure not to exceed the salary cap, uh, which is 203700 And if hiring graduate students, not to exceed the, NR the NRSA cap. Other things to note are that no escalation on any categories is allowable. So salary cost of living increases not allowed or any kind of escalation on um, other costs or or anything really it'll just get it'll get removed from your application for all future years it'll just go back to what you requested the first year um and the other thing to note is to make sure that the budget sheets match the budget justification and like i said before just making sure that the salary meets the cap for nih and i think uh next is marilyn and lee for review Hello, everybody. My name is Marilyn Morhoon. I'm a scientific review officer at NINDS. Uh, I've been here for a number of years, and I'm working together with my colleague, Dr. Li Jia, and she and I are going to be managing the review of the applications that come in for the RM1 Team Science. Next slide, please. So the first thing that will happen once I receive everybody's application is I need to check for completeness and compliance. Uh, and I wanna point out here that it's really important these other attachments that Karen was speaking about earlier, because these are items that will be reviewed during the review process, they are mandatory for the application. And you'll see in section four that it says required documents under other attachments. Um, if those attachments are missing in your application, unfortunately, your application will not move forward in review. Uh, there will also be a period where Karen and Corey and a lot of NINDS staff will be looking at the applications to ensure they are responsive to the other aspects of the grants. Uh, the main one being that the actual science does fall into the NINDS uh, areas that we cover. 
the next step I have is to recruit for scientific areas, uh, look at the applications, see what kind of expertise is needed. Um, if you feel there is a special kind of expertise required for the review of your application, there are two places you can provide this information. One is the assignment request form, and the second one is a cover letter. So please, if you feel there's some special kind of expertise that you're worried might not be available to cover your application, that's a way for you to communicate with me that you feel something special is needed for your application. Um, you will be receiving a letter from me once your application has been received and deemed complete and responsive. Uh, this will provide you with information about the meeting date and any post-submission material you may be able to submit. Um, long term, once the meeting's over, your score will be released within three days of the meeting and summary statements will be released no later than April 30th, which is one month prior to council. Uh, most likely they will be released much earlier than that, but that's kind of my drop dead date. Next slide, please. So going back to these three required areas, uh, the team management plan, bench line, benchmark and timeline for success, and your PEDP plan. These are all three very important aspects. And as I said before, if they are not included in your application, your application will not move forward to review. Uh, there's very clear instructions in the funding announcement in section four. So please make sure you check that prior to submitting. Next slide. So thinking about the RM1 review, um, it's kind of but not like a standard R01 review. We are very focused on the science that's being proposed in the application. But as you can imagine, because this is a team science approach, uh, there's much more emphasis on the team and the investigators and how they're going to work together to um, address the scientific issue at hand. So yes, the science is going to be first and foremost, and so the approach will absolutely be assessed, most likely to the same extent, if not more, uh, than a standard R01 application, but we're also going to be making sure that the reviewers consider the MPI team and how this MPI team is going to move the science forward in that specific area. So uh, go ahead, yep, next slide. So uh, there are special considerations that you can look at. If you look in section five, you will see the exact information that is provided to the reviewers in terms of the guidance for review. So you will know exactly what we're telling the reviewers to be considering. And so some of the things that you might uh, pay attention to is under significance, um, it's the integrated team approach um, and whether it will be transformative for this. For the investigator, it's whether each investigator on the MPI team is necessary and will contribute to achieving the goals. Uh, for innovation, how is the team approach uh, innovative or what does it bring that might be innovative to the process? Uh, the approach is the combined expertise and ideas being brought to bear to address the science at hand. And the environment, is there synergy um, gained from the involvement of multiple departments or institutions? Uh, perhaps there's special um, uh, things that might be available at different institutions or uh, you know, across from one department to the next at one institution. Um, the plan for enhancing diverse perspectives, as we mentioned before, is required. And it is assessed across all of the criteria. Next slide. So these are the examples of how PEDP will be assessed in each of the areas. Um, it is factored into every single aspect of the review. So it's considered under significance, investigator, innovation, approach, and environment. So it's very important that these PEDP plans are strong and it's clear for how your team is going to uh, address bringing in diverse perspectives and managing diverse perspectives going forward. And so with that, I'd like to say thank you and pass you over to Corey Kelly for your next steps. Thank you, Marilyn. Um, so as Karen mentioned, the first receipt date is October 7th. Um, so in between now and then, uh, we can assist you with uh, preparing or deciding to submit your application. Um, you can reach out to our team to evaluate your fit for the NINS mission, as well as the RM1 mechanism itself. Um, to do that, we'll need your specific aims, team competition, composition, excuse me, budget, and the RM1 justification, which is simply why you feel like your approach is appropriate for this mechanism. Um, 
the best resources for more information are, the, of course, the FOA, uh, which is listed uh, on our website. Uh, our website, which has a very robust uh, list of FAQs that we'll also update uh, based on your questions today. Um, uh, I highly recommend you can email us directly at ninsteamscience at nah.gov or directly contact your program officer um, who will have a very, pretty good sense of, of the fit of your uh, submission. Lastly, if you're interested in serving on the uh, study section, uh, as Marilyn mentioned, it will be a special study section, so you can contact Marilyn um, for further steps on that. Next slide, please. Okay, um, thank you uh, for everyone's questions in the chat. Um, for the uh, remaining time, we'll, we'll do two things. First, we've aggregated the questions that you were kind enough to submit uh, during your registration, and we will address uh, some of those first. Uh, I have, as, as we've been presenting, aggregating the questions you put in the chat, and um, we'll go ahead and field some of those out to the appropriate uh, NINDS staff um, after the, the pre-registration FAQs. Uh, 